Welcome to another stellar edition of Rock It Up. I'm your host, Darren Flower, and today we're going to be talking to CFRE, and we're going to be talking all about college radio, and we're going to learn a lot. I promise you this much, so make sure you stay tuned, because it's going to be awesome. Here we are, Rocket Up TV, and I'm so stoked to be here. I guess I'm obligated to be stoked because this is my own television show, but I want to introduce some very special guests, and we have here Jill Kennedy, and we have here Catherine. I don't know your last name, so maybe you can introduce the world to who you are. It's Aotis. <laughs> See, that's hard to pronounce, so that's why I got you to do it. So why is college radio so important to the music community? Well, <laughs> there's a lot of reasons why. I would say, um, the first thing is that it gives a lot of people a free shot at radio. I mean, not a lot of people can just walk in and do a show, but at least for us, we offer that um, for first-year students and anyone that really wants to come in from the Mississauga community. So I think that's probably a good place to start. Okay. Catherine, what do you think about this? Are we talking strictly college radio for the community or college radio for music in general? In general. Because I think one of the most important things that college radio provides is exposure for bands that no one knows who they are. And that's a big thing too because there's a lot of bands out there that don't necessarily get played on commercial radio and exactly. whatnot and you know they get the exposure, the platform if you will, to be you know showcased on college radio. And everyone has to start small right? And Gotta college radio small. is the perfect place. Um, the atmosphere is laid back. Uh, there's, you know, the only rule is that you have to be Canadian if you're in Canada, right? Oh, really? Um, I mean, other than that, it's a great outlet for artists who otherwise wouldn't know where to put themselves. Excellent, excellent. So I guess I'll, maybe I'll talk a little bit about our history together. So I've been luck lucky and fortunate enough to be a volunteer DJ for CFRE for the last couple of years, and uh, it's been a very exciting ride. Great, you know, to tell you the truth, and I'm very happy to have been able to be a part of the family, for lack of a better term, you know. So, you know, thank you very much for that. How much work does it go in to uh, running a college radio station, and what are the different departments of CFRE? Well, I think a lot of people think it's just sort of like the DJs come in, they do their shows. That's, that's what I think. That's all it is. But we've got five departments that actually operate the entire thing. So, Ooh, do tell. Um, I'm in the station management department, so I sort of oversee the other departments of creative, which is Catherine's. And then we have promotional, sort of the same field. Uh, programming, tech, and then music. Okay, so do you want to go into what you specifically do for your role? And then Catherine, maybe you get a chance to talk as well, too? Sure. Uh, do you want to start? <laughs> uh, well, I'm the creative director, which means I, I take care of the promotional material, the posters, uh, any any form of artwork, really. Also, I take care of um, <laughs> drawing attention to any uh, interviews we have coming up and promoting them on our various social media outlets. Also. Honestly, anything that has to do with promotions and the way it's stylized or taken care of or publicly broadcasted. So, really, anything that has to do with promotions and the way it looks and any of the... Uh, I guess it's also uh, majorly the visual component of the way the station looks. Okay, so you're almost like the creative arm. Basically, oh, it's, it's the way that we look physically to, I guess, all our social media outlets. And that's and very important too, right? I, I mean, I guess I would love to say it's very important. I think so. Come on, don't downplay this, okay? <laughs> you know, you're a very important part of the team. I, well, I thank you. <laughs> you're so humble. Okay. So, so what, is there, what exactly do you do? Um, well, like I said, I oversee the departments, so a lot of what I do is managing the workload that goes into our large-scale events. Okay, so what does CFRE give back to the community? Well, we've, we've run a lot of charity events. We try to do one per semester. Um, some of the ones that we've done so far are the 24-hour broadcasts to raise food and funds for the Mississauga Food Bank. Um, well, that sounds important. And we've worked with the Hard and Stroke Foundation as well. We do a lot of on-campus stuff as well, so... Like what? Like free hot chocolate. Ooh, I love lunch. hot chocolate! Yeah. Yeah, it's I can go for one right now. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think... I guess, on, I guess on a larger scale, 
uh, if you want to talk about uh, the, uh, the music I will always want to talk about music, yes, uh, I guess we give back in the sense that we do, like I said earlier, we give exposure to unknown artists. We also allow, we also give an outlet between our DJs to uh, the music scene and keeping them aware of upcoming concerts and even providing them with tickets to some. Well, we and actually let our, our DJs perform too. Um, we so have two events that we're trying to make like a very consistent yeah. thing. So we have Sound Summit and Sound Clash. So these are sort of like Battle of the Bands and Battle of the DJs kind of events where we like let our own DJs and bands that are associated with CFRE perform and compete against and, and like the audience gets to decide. Ooh, battle. Yeah. See, I'm thinking like, yeah. you know, <laughs> DJs like going head to head, like, you know, punching each other. Metaphorically. You know, is that what happens pretty much? Or? <laughs> Metaphorically. It's like Metaphorically. Punching. So that doesn't actually happen. Nobody puts on boxing gloves and, you know. They punch each other with beats. With beats? Yeah. Oh, that sounds <laughs> interesting. Okay. So how did you find yourself working for college radio? Um, in my first year, I was a very shy individual. I'm not- I'm Really? Say, I still kind of am, like, you know. No, you're not. <laughs> Come on now. So I decided to, like, break out of my shell. I really liked music, and CFRE was a good place to start. So I decided to do a show, and then from there, I just kind of, like, made my way through. I worked in programming for a year, and then I got promoted to station manager. So that's sort of my journey. <laughs> well, well, how did you find yourself as an on-air broadcaster? Broadcast journalist, if you will terrified at first. Really? Yeah. Why is that? The first few shows. I mean, being on radio is kind of a scary thing. Really? Yeah. Why? At times. Well, no one can see you, but they're, yeah, they're listening. Saw, okay, but they're listening. It's hard to talk to yourself for an hour. Really? Let's put it Unless that way. you're narcissistic like I am. <laughs> well, that might be a problem. <laughs> yeah, I'm working on that, okay? Seeking counsel and, you know, other sources of help. Okay. But it was interesting. I mean, I learned a lot about how to operate like a real radio show following all of the CRTC standards. So, like 35% Canadian content for every broadcast. Um, you have to play PSAs every hour, things like that. So, very technical stuff, but it was interesting. It seems like a lot of hard work to run a radio station. Yeah. So, are you like stressed, <laughs> like pulling out your hair, your beautiful hair, like, you know? Um, is it, is, is it could it, be stressful. Yeah. I mean, it is a part-time position, but I think we do try to put as much time as we can into it because we're all very passionate about it. So. That's for sure. Excellent. Catherine, how did you find yourself in college radio? Oh, I'm afraid my answer is terribly cliché. No, no, no. Come on now. Give yourself a little you're more on, credit. You're on... Cliché doesn't mean I'm not giving myself credit, but if you think about the campus and you think about all the clubs that make up the campus, what is really the one club that you could think of that sort of unifies everyone together? See, I don't know because I never went to university or anything. <laughs> so, I'm not smart enough to get in. So they the, won't point, let me in. the point I'm getting to is that I find music is sort of the outlet that unifies us all together. And I suppose if you can't fit in anywhere else, you're going to fit into a place that plays music, that harbors music, that... Uh, you know, uh, makes music a very public and communal thing. Okay. And if you're a social misfit like I am, I am totally a social. You would misfit. fit right in because. See, and that's the thing too. Like in talking about social misfits, let me tell you something. Okay, <laughs> I am actually an introvert. If you can believe this, I actually have poor social skills, really bad. But music helps me break out of my shell and lets me be social and lets me kind of, you know. I mean, that's another beautiful yet terrible cliche, right? It helps you break out of your shell. And yeah. I suppose CFRE kind of did that for both of us. Oh, yeah, for sure. So <laughs> I've seen a lot of people come through and, and they've gotten a lot of confidence just working there. So what are some of the benefits of working or volunteering your time at a college radio station? Well, like I said, not earlier, just CFRE, but just in general, right? I mean, it gives you a chance to work in broadcasting, mostly for free. Like I, I don't, I can't speak to other radio stations, but for us, it's a free experience for anyone as long as they can come in and they're not like a sketchy character or anything, you know? Like well, you hired me, and I'm totally sketchy. I don't know how that <laughs> happened, but uh, well, you follow the rules, so I mean, that's most of the time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So we we train them on CRTC, and we just we try to make all the tech stuff very clear to them, and I think. Um, that's a lot of benefits already. Um, they can broadcast, they have a lot of free reign. I think that's something that like is a really important thing about college radio is you have a lot of free reign to plan your own show, what you're going to talk about, um, as long as you stick to the rules. But it's pretty, like the rules aren't really that, like, like you can't just, you can kind of escape, like you don't have to. Well, I always thought that you, like, you know, ruled CFRE with an iron fist and you know how to <laughs> drop the hammer. On people. So hey, sometimes. We sometimes? have to. I mean, yeah, it's yeah, a business, right? Sometimes Absolutely. 
with college radio, it offers something that is different. It, I think it really is a great alternative to commercial radio, which is fine as well, too. I mean, that is really, really important, as we touch on other episodes of Rock It Up. But college radio, you get to hear stuff that you typically don't normally hear from the artists that you really like. Or you hear artists you don't even know. And that's a really great thing, too, and it's really good exposure, right? And that is ultimately the beauty of college radio, right? You get to learn about new bands, new songs you wouldn't have heard otherwise, and uh, it's great for everyone. I well, think. and the other thing is too, is like and musicians when you decide. volunteer your time for college radio as an online DJ, as I did with you guys, you get a chance to, I guess, network with other bands. You know, if you want to do that, you get a chance to brush up on your you know, broadcasting skills, which is very important. You know, this is like the training ground to get polished. You know, if you want to take your career further to another level, then this is really, like, you know, a, play, a really good place to start. Would you agree or disagree? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you have to start somewhere, right? And I think college radio is a perfect place to start for everything you just mentioned. I mean, it's an outlet for broadcasting, it's an outlet for new music, it's an outlet to even just be socially connected to other people, it's an outlet to meet producers, an outlet to meet band members. It's it's really the breeding ground, I think, for a lot of possibilities. Excellent. Okay, we've been referencing this M-word music a lot, so <laughs> what is it about music that you love? Quickly, before oh we go head off to the where do you start? Where do you start? <laughs> God! Uh, think about this carefully. It can, it can be there for any emotion, I think. That's sort of a big thing for me. Like, it doesn't matter what I'm feeling. There's always something I can, I can go to in music. Any artist, yeah. So yeah. I, think, I don't know. Excellent. <laughs> It well, fills voids. Does it? Well, I would <laughs> I say think so. so. Yeah, no, I know so for sure. Okay, so we're going to have to go off to a commercial quickly, but we're going to come back and talk to a couple other members from CFRE and get into a different aspect of college radio when we come back. So make sure you stay tuned to Rock It Up TV. Rock It Up would not be possible without the help from our sponsors, like CFRE Radio. For more information, please visit CFRE radio.com Sherwood Mortgage Group Longtime friends serving longtime customers Call Chris D'Souza at 416-884-2984 Loretta and Sherilyn Flower at Remax Realty Enterprises For more information please visit flowerteamrealestate.com or call 905-822-2200 Nude Buddha Tattoo Studio, located at 42 Bronte Street South, Milton, Ontario. Call 905-203-0737 or visit NudeBuddhaTattoo.com. Mississauga Arts Council. Connect, create, engage, support. Find them at MississaugaArtsCouncil.com or on Facebook and Twitter under Miss Arts Council. Okay, we're back here on Rock Up TV with CFRE Radio, and we're talking all about college radio, okay? So we are with new guests here, with Kay and with Monique. How are you guys doing? Good. You guys are stoked to be here, aren't you? Yeah, definitely. So I can stoked. see it in you. Excellent. <laughs> all right, so let's get into it right now. Okay, so what departments do you work for? Um, so as Darren introduced me, I'm Kay Chi. I work at CFRE. I'm the technical director there. Um, I'm Monique, programming. Yeah. Okay, sure. so that's great, but I... Actually, and I volunteer my time at CFRE, but I actually don't really know what to do. Like, I have an idea, yeah. but I don't know the specifics, so maybe you can kind of get into it. Okay. I think it's important to talk about it. Well, basically, when anybody wants to apply to CFRE, they go through me. They hand in um, an application, or if they want more information, I'm the first line of contact between staff and DJs. Like, I send 98% of the emails to DJs. I send out angry emails when they mess up. Oh, really? Um, yeah. That, okay, I'm thankfully I haven't gotten many of those. Yeah, you're, you're doing pretty good, yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, that's basically me. And then I make sure that they're following all the regulations and things like that. Right. Okay, so for, uh, so you basically hire DJs, right? Yeah. Okay, so what are you looking for in a potential candidate? Um, what I look for in a DJ is that they seem to know what they're doing. They have a clear idea what they want their show to be, that they can actually speak well, because you, you're on radio, you need to talk, right? Yeah, that's probably one of the, you know, prerequisites yeah. of the job, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I would think so. That they're at least decent enough with technology, because like, we have them around our CDJs and things like that, so we don't want someone who's like, 
has no idea what they're doing. Yeah, that's probably a bad idea. Um, and that they can just follow simple rules and things like that. So, just like just someone that looks like they have their life together. Yeah. Is that so? Yeah. Excellent. I'm not going to judge them in like all aspects, but if they could come in here and do a proper show, that's really what I'm looking for. Yeah. Oh, okay. Excellent. Okay. Um, for me, like as a technical director, I think the main thing I do is troubleshooting. Like, um, I'm mainly in the studio. If anything goes wrong. I have to go in there, fix it, and there's a ton of tech problems that happen like every day, so I have to solve that. Um, other than that, I have to do I have to do a lot of training. Um, so there's DJs who come in, which come in with no experience, and that's one of the beauties of college radio, really, because it's as Jill said previously, um, it's a place where new people can come in and just get experience and learn about um, radio and broadcasting. So I go in, I train them, teach them how to use our equipment, you know, teach them small tricks about how to broadcast better, to be more confident, and whatnot. And that's pretty much my job as a tech director. Okay. So what are some of the challenges faced in college radio? I feel like the number one, especially at CFR, is just exposure and, I guess, getting interest within the community. Um, that's been an issue that we've been fighting against, I guess, for years now, that a lot of people don't know that we exist. So what we try to do is host more events, get our name out there, have people talking about CFRE and generate interest through that. Um, this year, we've... It's been amazing. We have more DJs than ever, and we have more people coming in trying to apply. And it's not just people who are like in a specific grouping, like they're like music nerds and they listen to like all these really specific genres, but like people that you would never even think would be interested in like radio broadcasting, things like that, wa want to come and do a show. They want to host shows about cinema, they want to host shows about pop culture. It's not just music generated now. We have a lot more talk shows and things and like that. And I guess that. that's one of the like, you know, the benefits of uh, college radio as opposed to commercial radio is because you have the variety of different subjects, right? It's not yeah. just music, although that is a focal point for sure, but you can actually have a talk show about whatever. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure you can have a talk show about politics, or is that kind of a gray area? Yeah, well, politics is a bit of a gray area. You have to be careful how you tread with that. But yeah, college radio offers a lot more personality. So you you actually, I guess you get to feel more what a DJ's like, as opposed to commercial radio, the DJ's presenting what the company has told them to present. But with college radio, you are your own boss, so you present what you want to show. Right. Okay. So what is a normal work day at CFRE like? Okay, so for me as the tech director, a normal work day involves A, cleaning up, um, cleaning up the studio, checking if, anyth like, if anything's wrong with the studio. So, like I said before, troubleshooting, fixing, making sure the system works because we have a pretty complex system there. And if, it, if one thing doesn't work, then the whole thing will, well, not the whole thing will break down, but like people who use that equipment wouldn't be pleased. Like, say for example, if our CDJs aren't hooked up properly because a previous DJ might have unplugged them to have his own setup then the next DJ who comes in is going to be confused and like going to start freaking out, right? Right. Um, other than that, what I usually do is I do a lot of recordings. So we have bands that come in, I do all the recordings, set up all the microphone, set up our interfaces, um, record to Ableton and whatnot. And other than that, I do tech for events. So whenever we have like a battle of the bands or a battle of DJs, I have to run around, connect wires, visualize how everything's going to be hooked up. And it pretty much just, I do all the tech things at CFRE, which is so fun to do. Is it? Yeah, it really is. Well, that's the thing. I, I have a very creative brain, but when it comes to the tech side, I know next to nothing, which is why you're like, you're like the right-hand man, and I don't know how many times I've called you and probably irritated you, you know, asking you these inane questions about the, the tech side. Don't worry, that happens like to me every day, so... Yeah, and like you kind of are obligated to, you know, like, you know, appease me, I guess, right? <laughs> so. But like, um, like I said, it's something that happens every day, and I, th I, I find it fun to do, because I like troubleshooting things. I'm a, I like computers, and like, I solve things on computers as well, so it's like, you know, going through a mental checklist of like, okay, this thing's working, this thing's not working, if this thing's not working, then like, you know, what are the possible solutions to this and just like, work with the person. Okay. So what is it about college radio that, you know, appeals to you? Um, I guess at first when I was going to join CFR, what appealed to me is just like the sense of community that they had there. It was like... I don't know, it was, just, it was just a really cool space. I was like, I want to be a part of this and everything. Definitely. And then, now working as a programming director, I really love how I get to meet like all these different kind of personalities and interact with people. Like Before, I was a pretty shy person. I don't talk like you. Really? Children. Yeah, I don't, I don't normally I talk to I would have never guessed long. that. I lurk in shadows, that's what you I do. You lurk in the shadows? Yeah. Shadow Me too. Lurker. Shadow lurker. I'm a shadow lurker. <laughs> yeah, oh, totally. See, so I just okay. fake it. Mm -hmm. I actually put on this extrovert personality, but really I'm just like this coward. I'm just kind of like... Exactly. Hiding in the shower. Lurking in yeah, the shadows. Lurking. Really. It's not yeah. hiding, it's lurking. Okay. Yeah. What about you, Kay? Um, so the reason why I got into college radio and the reason why I really like it is because it's very freeform, is the best way to put it. 
Um, I yeah. have my own show where I play Japanese indie music, and like that's completely out of the genre that people listen here. But, but that's like, amazing like too because you're not going to hear that kind of stuff on commercial radio. Yep. This is why college radio is so important, you know, to the music community especially because you're going to hear a variety of different things. And the best know? thing is, like, once you create a um, small following, it's like it, people spread the word. Like, some sometimes I don't get too many listeners. Sometimes when I have themed shows, I get a lot of listeners, and like a lot is in like a uh, hundred thousand. Like, that would be nice, but... A million thousand? <laughs> That'd be even better. Yeah? That's but what like, I get normally when I do a broadcast. I wish I'd get that many. A million thousand. Yeah, but like, um, we get a, I get a lot of listeners on special theme shows, and it just feels great because like, you create a small community, which people who like your genre of music or like you as a radio personality who talk, who talks, so it's like they follow you because you're an interesting person or you play interesting music. Commercial radio people just tune into a frequency and they're like, oh, I like this genre of music, and then they listen to it, but like... You know that the people listening to your show are listening to your show because they like your music or they like you as a person, as a personality. Right. Does it feel good to be able to entertain people? It does. Um, like, I think that one of the best points of working as a DJ is seeing the feedback. Because um, college radio, it's all about community. So people are able to message you over you know, Facebook, Skype, over our, to our emails. And like, I've gotten a few emails and people say, like, hey, that's a great show. You know, can I throw a free request for next week? And I'm like, sure. And then we talk with them. And... Because I worked as a radio DJ, I've actually met a few producers in Canada who make Japanese style music, so it's really cool. Excellent. So I mean, I guess like you know, again, the benefits of being in college radio is that it's like a training ground to like brush up on your broadcasting skills and networking as well too, because you have this wonderful opportunity to connect with other people that maybe you wouldn't have been able to do without it, right? Yep. Uh, college radio has definitely given me an opportunity to reach out to a lot of people. Um, Talk to people who are like-minded and who like like-minded music. People who are trying to get out there in the industry, like me, as well. And I just talk and like we just get together and we hang out. Well, and that's the thing too. There is a lot of people out there. I don't know if this is well known, but there's a lot of people out there that are kind of like disillusioned and don't want to hear, you know, commercial radio and you know what the corporations are pumping out. And I guess you know, college radio is a good, opp a good opportunity. For you to capitalize on that, you know, certain demographic, right? That's really true. Um, because we're able to mostly say what we want. Obviously, we don't want to offend people. But we're responsible for what we say instead of someone else telling us to say something. So, we're able to speak our mind, speak our opinion, and I think that's one of the most valuable things in working in college radio. Right. So, for the people who are listening right now that don't know any better, why should they be a part of this community if they wanted to? Okay, I feel like. If music's your thing, if broadcasting's your thing, if you even just want to see what it's all about, do join college radio. It's the best way to, I guess, be introduced into that world. And even if you don't think that you'd be that'd be something for you, give it a try. Because like I said, there's a lot of people who come into this thinking, I don't know anything about broadcasting, I don't know anything about hosting a show. And they come into it realizing like, hey, this is great. And it's, even if you don't even want to do a show, there's a lot of stuff behind the scenes. Yeah, let's talk about that. What is involved. that? What behind the scenes? What goes on? Um, a lot of stuff, actually. So... Like, I guess putting it, going into shows, like we have a lot of um, high school students who intern at the radio station, so they do a lot of stuff for us. They, um, I guess, shelves or CDs, like things around the office and things like that. Um, for me, programming, like sending out emails, being more professional, like meeting with like people from like Meadowdale Theatre and things like that. So yeah, yeah, and some other things that happen beyond the scenes, are, for example, um, <clears throat> we have some volunteers who, are, who like to work with us but aren't comfortable to have their own show, which is totally fine. And these type of people, they like they like to organize their stacks. Um, we have like a ton of CDs you've seen in our studio, or not studio office. I have, and I'm jealous. And every time I go into your office, I'm just drooling. I'm like salivating, like, oh, oh, oh. I just wish I had all that stuff. Yeah, you know? we have a lot of people who help us sort through all that. And like that's the community we like to build because volunteers help us work through that. We, I, uh, for me personally, because I work in tech, I have some tech volunteers who, if I'm not available on campus and if I can't be reached on the phone, they go into the studio, they would have, I've trained them, they're able to solve the solution, or Minions? solve this problem, in Minions? a way. Yeah? I guess they don't prefer that term, though, right? We call them volunteers. Volunteers, interns. okay. And interns. Okay. <laughs> the politically correct term. Yep. Excellent. Awesome. All right, well, in closing, what else do you have to say, uh, you know, that hasn't been said before? It's a great experience to get out there. Um, it's a great way to start, really, because a lot of people like me, I knew nothing about music when I went to this job. Like Really? I was a film person, not music. Not really? I was like, hey, let's do it because I like college radio. I used to listen to college radio on the side as well. Wow. Back in high school, and I was like, this is something I like to do. I know they don't get many listeners, but like, it seems like a cool thing to do. 
and just it's a community thing so you know it's fun because it's it beats corporate well not beats but like I like it better than listening to corporate radio right and it is fun to do and it is cool to do and I noticed before I joined uh, you know college radio my cool level was kind of like you know down so immediately once I joined it I just it skyrocketed I sense that. Mm -hmm. I really believe that. So, I mean, I'm very grateful for the opportunity that the CFRA has given me. And uh, I got a chance to really meet a lot of people and network and get better as a broadcast journalist. Okay, so I guess we had a really good episode today. I think I learned quite a lot. I mean, and I've been, uh, you know, associated with CFRE for a while, but there's some things that, you know, you cleared up for me and I had no idea about. So, I mean, it's awesome. And I think a lot of people also got a chance to peek behind the black veiled curtain of what really goes on in college radio. So, I just want to say thanks a lot for being on this show. And thank you very much, Kay, for, thank me, you for, for having being us. here. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, it was great. So I know the next week's episode is going to be awesome as well, too. So make sure that you tune in to Rock It Up. Rock It Up would not be possible without the help from our sponsors. Like CFRE Radio. For more information, please visit CFREradio.com. Sherwood Mortgage Group. Longtime friends serving longtime customers. Call Chris D'Souza at 416 884 2984. Loretta and Sherilyn Flower at Remax Realty Enterprises. For more information, please visit flowerteamrealestate.com or call 905 822 2200. Nude Buddha Tattoo Studio, located at 42 Bronte Street South, Milton, Ontario. Call 905 203 0737 or visit NudeBuddhaTattoo.com Mississauga Arts Council Connect, create, engage, support Find them at MississaugaArtsCouncil.com or on Facebook and Twitter under Miss Arts Council